Chelsea Smokes are on? Yeah, and I know what day it is. It's Thursday. So. <laughs> Mic check, mic check. It's Thursday. It's five. It's Tony and Chelsea live. Whoa. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is our live photo review show where we pick a new theme each week and then we review your photos but also teach you edits in Lightroom. So if you're looking to learn more about photography or editing tips, you're in the right place. Today our theme is fog plan. And that's when you get photos of the fog that might not even work if there weren't fog. The fog can be a blessing, so you have to use it for you. We're going to talk about that more. If you haven't already submitted a photo, you can do that at sdp.io slash submit. And if you peeked the next... You have a here, so there we go. sdp.io slash submit. And yeah, send it in now, not after the show, because we'll be on to a different topic, which will be... Wildlife. Wildlife with Mark Smith. I'm so excited about this. If you know Mark Smith, which I'm sure you do, he's an incredible photographer, a really cool guy. That's him. And he has a new line of merch called Glad I'm Not a Fish. I think that's pretty funny, so <laughs> I wanted to share the picture. And look at his picture. So he takes really beautiful wildlife video. I know he's going to have excellent feedback. So put a reminder in your calendar. Next week is going to be really good. All right. Can I say, I think... The fog plan topic is a really important one because so many photographers just think, how, could I, how do I get the best picture when I show up in a situation? But having a fog plan means changing the way you think. It means making plans for the photo before the conditions arise and then constantly monitoring the conditions. And I have all these like weather things on my watch so that I can constantly, constantly see what things are like. I'm always peeking out the window for something unusual happening in the sky I tell you, I'm like your little morning weather person. Yes. I'll be like, it's pretty. Sometimes you don't get out of bed. (laughs) And I'll be like, okay, I gotta go. You're gonna go send up the drone. I'll be like, go get that. Yeah, and a drone is a good fog plan, but you might also have like a cool bridge or a mountain or a valley or something that you visit. But make sure you take advantage of these conditions because we're about to look at stunning photos. I can already see their stuff. That would not be possible without the weather. first, I want to say hi to Frank. Hi, Frank. How are you doing? Hey, everybody. Doing good. Glad to be here. Excited to see some photos and very excited next week to see Mark Smith on the channel. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, Frank's going to be taking your questions and your comments. So if you have any for us, let him know. He'll pass them along. Thanks, Frank. All right. Right away, we're starting off with a light fog and it's beautiful. And what it's doing is it's adding a glow around all the lights that's really pretty. Uh, The the skyscrapers are disappearing into the fog, which is cool. It adds more depth and interest. We're starting strong. I give it a pick. Good job, Tom. I don't know if this counts as fog, but I'm going to accept it because it's serving the same purpose. People did ask me if um, smoke was acceptable. And I think that it serves the same purpose. So if it had not been smoky, the fireman may have had too many distracting things behind him. So I think... You know, it works. Mm. I don't don't go around making smoke. That's for sure. I think we could have gotten closer here. I mean, maybe you can't get closer to a fire. You're like get close. But I would fill the frame a little more if you could get a little bit lower. Maybe maybe think about it. But at the same time, I understand you're in burning conditions. You probably don't have full mobility. So I'm just brightening it up a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks good. That's good. Turn that histogram on. Okay. This is some proper fog, and look how much mood this adds to it. It adds so much depth by sort of separating the foreground and background. They must be on the train, and they decided to lean out when it went around the corner so that they could include that as part of the path and draw your eye through the picture. Oh, wait. This is a great shot. I think it's a great shot, but I'm seeing, I'm having a vision for them, and I just want to try it out. Just forgive me if I'm wrong. But I think that this could be cool. Mm. Yeah, I like that. And I would just like put the text up a little bit too. What do you think about the 140th? They allowed a little bit of, you see a little bit of motion in the leaves. Is that the right shutter speed? Do you wish there was more motion or that it was frozen still? I think it's because they're in the train. Yeah. They're, they're the motion, but I think it's good. I like the motion. I think yeah. it's a part of the story. I agree. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Oh. My goodness, those are spiders. Oh, yeah. Spider city. That's interesting. I didn't quite, it took me a second to ponder what this was. Um, 
I, my eye doesn't rest anywhere. So I'm wondering what the focal point here could be, whether it's getting extremely close to one of these spider webs and putting it in the focal point. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool, like a mini landscape. Mm -hmm. And I like um, how the background is just strange. It's otherworldly. It's, it's a little spooky. Right. It is otherworldly. It's Maybe cool. the editing needs to lean into that. Okay. Joseph, you get a pick. This blows me away. It's just gorgeous, right? Just the tones of it. And here the fog is setting apart that set of three trees in the center, making that a proper focal point. And that's what fog can do. It creates subject separation by being Thanks, behind fog. something and hiding whatever is behind it. Oh my God. People yeah. are going to accuse us of being sponsored by fog. That <laughs> concerns me. I like how his, um, the name of his file is Fog Isolates. There's a little lesson, a little bit of truth. Right in the file name. And he did an eight second exposure which maybe there were some ripples in the water and he wanted to really convey Heck. the stillness of it. Great job. Joseph had a fog plan. Now we are making fog, this which is, is Kendrick so Lamar. legit. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I actually think concerts are like one of the most fun and gorgeous things to photograph because they put so much energy into the lighting and the effects and that's why you can get shots like this just by being there. I'm just jealous they saw Kendrick Lamar, but I do love this isolation. I like that you went black and white, and I also like the negative space above him. Um, yeah. Cool. Very cool. This is artificial fog. I also count it. Yeah. Or smoke. We'll or see some more of those, but you can get atmosphere in a can, and it's so useful. Here's a very straightforward pick. It's so minimalistic. The fog means there's nothing in the background, but should they have waited for a cool Ducati to come through? They, I mean, that's so specific. What if they... What if they died waiting? <laughs> you have to take some chances in photography. Um, no, I like that it's just very plain. Mm -hmm. And this would be a cool print for a garage or something. I don't know. I, yeah. I like this a lot. But this what? is the morning you call a friend with a cool car. You take the shot, but then you provide some options. You say, just come up the road. I'm just going to photograph you as you drive past. Right? Pick. I wish he called me. Bob Parker, what's up? It's, it's a, what? a little off level. Don't ask me. My head's on crooked. We've talked about this. <laughs> San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge, absolutely famous for having fog rolling in. And I, uh, like, people like the wolves are, like, monitoring the weather and stuff. <laughs> like, they know when to show up, when it's going to be beautiful. They have, like, complex algorithms. Uh, I think we'll probably see a few photos of the Golden Gate Bridge. We never saw a good fog when we were there. No. The several different times we've been it there. It didn't cooperate for us. I'm going into the luminance shift, and I'm just selecting some of these colors and bringing it up a little bit um, just to brighten it up a bit. But very cool. I wish we did see fog. Oh. I love it. Fog and forest. I like that everything's leaning. Yeah. And I think without the fog, we wouldn't be able to see that because the background would be too complex. Yeah. I, I find this so haunting. I like give it a This pick. would be a great print. I don't know. It's so simple, but. And the trees, they're growing like that? What's happening in nature? Are we okay? Tell me more, Ivan. Tell and, me. and can I point out, the great thing about these amazing fog photos is they don't require anything of your camera. You don't need a super fast lens or high megapixels because you're not going to capture the detail anyway. He's shooting with a D3100, which is like a 15-year-old entry-level camera. And, and like, look at this shot. It's, yeah, it's gorgeous. Cool. And the kit lens, by the way. Great shot. This is fog? Is, is this for real? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, for some reason, I'm like fixated on the bokeh here. I mean, we're not civilians. I always get like fixated on little technical aspects of a photo. And like, look at the way things are like radiating from the leaves. Yeah. Some of this must have been done in editing. But it still looks cool. Yeah, I like it's the colors. It's a good way to isolate a wildlife shot. Low morning mist in Colorado. I, you know, I think if the fog had, it's almost a river of fog. If the fog had not been there, I don't think there would have been an interesting focal point. Mm -hmm. So I think it helped. And I like that in the foreground, you added these elements uh, to give the photo some depth. That looks nice. Casey, your X30 did great, but a drone would have been mind blowing. Put up a drone, fly right between these two peaks here in the foreground, and then go low over the trees and low over the fog. 
This is the time to get a drone. Drones You're, are great. I like in the how fog. you romanticize drones. Oh, it's so powerful. Yeah, they are. They they get beautiful, interesting shots. Um, this is another one where I don't know what's behind the fog, but I'm guessing that your photo has been made simpler and more interesting. Well, I, we just watched True Detective, so I have some terrible ideas about what might be behind the fog. <laughs> yeah, it could be spooky. Yeah. I'm going to go in and just um, play with the coolness. I love when there's snow and everything looks blue. So I, I don't see any reason to color correct. And you did some of that already. Um, so you could go in and you could play it up even more if you wanted to. Like I just add an entire blue cast and you could add some contrast. But what yeah. do you think about uh, dropping the blacks and just like making him a silhouette? Oh, I don't want to make the ice a silhouette. I guess I'd have to. You could select the select subject. The subject too. I just want to try it. Try it. You know, there's no right or wrong. You should be experimenting and playing and having fun and yeah. You know, don't worry about making mistakes. Maybe. I think that's pretty cool. Let's go back and do the press Y. Okay. Hmm, definitely more dramatic. Um. Okay. This is Yosemite by Neil. And here the fog really creates a mood. I think if it weren't for the fog, the shape of the deer here wouldn't really be visible because it would be so mm. complex behind him. But it makes that deer a really important focal point. Yeah, really nice composition too. Great job. I like that the deer is framed by the grasses in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Whoa. This is funny because it's so similar. I actually want to raise the white point a little bit. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit brighter just because we're relying on the brightness of that fog to create the subject separation for the elk that's there. But we don't want to blow out the moon. So well, we might need to do like a I also don't point. want to go too bright because I like this muted. I feel like it's quiet and peaceful in nighttime. Yeah, usually I'm always telling people like have a white point and a black point and have maximize your contrast, but fog sort of breaks that rule. Sometimes fog. we want low contrast here. Fog breaks the rules. I like your colors too. You have this rosy pink in the sky with the green. Those are complementary colors and uh, they're bisecting the photo. So you have this really interesting balance. You could squint. Like look at your screen right now and just squint and make it a very rudimentary shapes and the composition is good. You have this flag of green, white, and pink. And then there's an elk in there. It's very cool. I'm going to give you a pick. I will say, Dave, try to get that ISO down some. Like, get the shot. Be safe about it. But then you could have been shooting at F8, and I bet you would have had plenty of depth of field, especially at this distance. And, you know, F8, 130th, I bet you could have been at ISO 100, and you just would have had a cleaner, more detailed image for, very cool. for your editing. Jordan Bloomfield. Ooh, I love... Oh, oh look! See, I, I'm telling people just wait for somebody to come through. He did it. That's yeah. almost as cool as um, Sir, could you get a yellow jacket? <laughs> yeah. Subject, so, I'll explain later. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can shift it to a different color. I mean, it's definitely possible. I just mean, can I do it right now successfully? But really, Jordan, such a great spot. You found the right time. Change you have a friend with a cool car. Tell that friend with the cool car, be ready, because I'm going to call you the next time it's foggy. You hop in, we're going to get a really cool picture for your garage wall, and I bet they'll sign up for it, and you'll both get a cool picture out of it. Tony, he has a friend with a cool bike. Yeah, what true. do you have Maybe against bikes? They're less cool than cars, right? Not if you care about the world. <laughs> do you? Uh, electric cars? We're on the record right now. <laughs> I do care about the world, and I care about cars. <laughs> <laughs> Those two things have to be okay. for me. Okay, so I just changed the color so they blend in a little less. I don't know. I feel like we did a little teamwork. That's but I, even without my edits, I give you a pick. Oh, Dom David. Um, it's on you. So the focal point is the moss, which I agree is beautiful. Very oh, really? Because my eye went to the rock. But I was immediately struck by things sort of feeling out of balance right away. And I'm not sure why that is. Like, it could be that there's like a felled tree here and there's this sort of empty space here. Like, this, this area is where my eye immediately went. I think it's because of the rock. Yeah. But I still like that the fog kind of made the trees separated. And you, I like the fallen tree because it goes against these lines. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I like that, Dom. Good shot, Dom. Oh, my goodness. 
wow, what is happening to these people? They should not go in there. Um, is this a cool off station at an amusement park? Oh, maybe. Let's make it spookier. Let's make it look ominous. They're not having fun. Yeah, I actually do like isolating them a little bit more. Now there's no context. You're like, are they okay? And I kind of <laughs> like that. Great shot, you know. Do you have any uh, questions for us, Frank? Yeah, we've got uh, not, not as much questions, but comments. Uh, Jim says he wants to take a sip for every time you crop today. And you guys haven't really cropped that much, so I think he's waiting to get his buzz on. And he was also wondering how many cameras and phones have fallen off of that train and gone into that creek there. I think there might be a couple. <laughs> might be a good place to collect. It could be, yeah. Uh, Chrom chromatomic chromatomic says he loves when uh, objects fade off into the fog off in the distance on that bridge photo which i, I really like that photo i thought that was really cool. That was so cool uh joe pollard had asked a good question that tree shot in the forest where the trees were leaning a little bit um, could that have been done by rolling shutter but ivan who actually took the photo said that he tilted his camera with the hillside to make them have that look to it there so if anybody was wondering about that photo i, I kind of was too that was his answer to that okay i was wondering about that but what's really cool what you did ivan is that you did like you kept all hill in it so i was looking for that and that was really neat See? Good eye. yeah it, it didn't occur to me that the camera was just tilted i like when people do simple but creative things to make a totally new photo oh and for jim who's having a sip for every crop it's national margarita night oh so I have water. I respect the day. I know you Texan. do. I'm going to have a, a margarita later. Me. I have to. Second only to Cinco de Mayo. I need to hold it down for the people. You guys this saw it. This is like practice for Cinco de Mayo. Mm. Okay. Um, hmm. I do think wildlife photography on a foggy day is a good idea, even though it can be extremely challenging depending on the location of the fog. I like it warmed up. Thank you. It's, I don't know if it's straight. I can't be trusted. But I think we warm it up and we get sunsetty vibes. Mm -hmm. So, but I like that you played with the fog. A lot of people would have gone and said, oh man, it's foggy. I'm not going to take pictures of birds. But you stuck it through and you got a cool picture. <gasps> oh, speaking of Jim. Oh, that's a person. Oh, okay. I thought it was some kind of goose, but maybe she's a silly goose. See, Jim brought a friend. You got to plan your focus. Well, way sometimes. to flex that you have a friend, Jim. <laughs> Not all of us are so lucky. No, nope. I'll get one one day. Right, you get a pick. Um, should it be a little brighter? Let's try it. What's Jim going to do? Let's crop it for Jim. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Good. You could do like a series of crops. Really mess them up a little bit. All right. <laughs> First, I'm going to crop it here. Oh, that's too much. You got to crop. I got. Now I'm going to crop it here. Okay. It's but then, just an assault on his friend. Then I think I'm just going to go to the original and crop it again. Are you with us still, Jim? <laughs> Welcome, Jim. We're Jim's enablers, basically. Yeah. All right, I give you a pick, Jim. I hope <laughs> you're okay. Work. Lost okay. in the fog. Edward, I got to zoom in a little bit. Well, a boatyard is just extremely busy, so I could see how fog would help because there's usually unattractive things near boatyards. Has anyone else noticed that? Um, I am looking for a focal point. I think I'm getting a general feeling that there's a lot of boats. Maybe if like Tony was right here, that would be cool. I'm going to put it in the black and white and bump up those highlights and just see if we get a little something. But I like Eagle that you're playing. Eye. The, the puns they put on boats. I love it. I want a boat just so I could make a pun forever. <laughs> right, well, think of your boat name and tell us later. Mm, okay. This, I, I think it needs the one more thing like there's a boat coming through or something but also you can see the line of the horizon in there and it's kind of i got it so we got a crop it's seaweed s-e-e-w-e-e-d and i tell people i own a dispensary <laughs> that's a good one Charles. thank you if you need your boat name you know where to come okay this is a really cool spot i think you know, like we have this sort of rock jutting in from the side here. I, I wish we would just get closer to this and maybe shoot at a little bit of a wider angle. Just 
to provide a more prominent focal point. Like the whole subject is kind of hazy, but I think fog photos work best when there's something that's sharp and then the fog sort of creates distance and separation. I give this a pick. This is so magical. I would like to go here. How do I make that happen? I, I should say like the building is the, the subject here, but there's yeah. almost no subject separation between it and the background. But if you were to get closer to the building, it would become crisper. And if you could maybe compose it so that there was distance behind it, then it, you would have that subject separation. Something to think about the next time it's foggy. Lance Call. Look at that little lonely tree. Yeah, and that, that's immediately where my eye went. That becomes the focal point, right? Um, I, I don't like the rocks in the lower right corner. What would they do to you? You don't even want to know. I'm gonna, I was going to try just making it a little more blue to give a little color contrast, but I don't want to go too far. I mean, it's tempting to go far, but then you get, it could get a little cheesy. Nice. Okay, great shot, Lance. Oh. I think city streets, when it's foggy and maybe a little rainy, are so cool. Wow, this is cool. Add a little con more contrast. Pick. You saw a moment. Horse, tree, face off at first life. <laughs> Who won? This is great, but there's there's too much at the bottom, right? I this don't know. This is for Jim. This is for Jim. That's, for that's Jim. Fine. Yeah, so just think about the balance. Uh, there, I just found there was too much. I love the colors. But this is fantastic. The colors in there. And the fog really helped you out because I see this, this truck. That's the magical thing about fog. You have to learn to see things in layers. So you can go to a spot and it might be ugly because it's too cluttered, but you might think, okay, all the ugly stuff is on the other side of this and on a foggy day, I can make something out of this. <laughs> That's why it's a fog plan. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. Yeah, that is a gorgeous I'm gonna spot. give you a pick. It's just so simple. Now, Tony might tell you to wait for a Ducati, but I like the <laughs> emptiness here. I just, it makes me imagine what could happen here. Five stars. Okay, what do you imagine happening there? A Ducati. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glad we're on the same page. That's why it works. <laughs> Andrew. Th there is some haze here, but for, and we have these like gorgeous god rays coming through caused by the light streaming through the thin parts of the clouds and then like dark, thick parts of the clouds creating the contrast here. But my eye doesn't rest anywhere. What would you do, Charles? Mm. I don't know. I, it's simple. I kind of like it. I might just focus on the lines and go black and white. You have just a simple composition. Um, he could uh, do AI generate and put something there. I'm surprised we haven't made that a component of the show, honestly. You want to piss everybody off? Yeah. <laughs> a crowd of photographers. Everybody's using it. AI into their pictures. Okay, I meant this one. Sorry, from Rich. Um... Oh, because you accidentally sent two. We didn't even, we didn't notice. Oh. Uh, I like that the tree is getting separation from the fog. Where is this? This is so interesting. Yeah, but I'm, I'm wishing there was more su subject separation. I wish you could shift yourself to the left because I see more depth in the right part of the frame. It's not always possible. Maybe you'd be like knee deep in marsh. I think it helps to just crop out some of the more in focus stuff over there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, pretty. Oh, oh, I saw this one in the readers group, and I gave it a like there too. I give this it is a gorgeous. Pick. Very simple but beautiful. Extremely spooky. Mm -hmm. And Sean went telephoto with this. I, I do kind of wish there was less sort of foreground space. Like I wish the camera would just tilt it back a little bit. Hmm. I like it. So we disagree. Is it tilted? Yes, but I think that makes it better. Makes it spooky. Uh, I like the depth between the different mountains. It's giving like a very interesting depth. Yeah. Um, and but there's not a lot of detail, and sometimes black and white is a little more forgiving for that. Um, and then we could up the contrast a bit. I think timing here is key, and we have two boats coming through. That's too many. Like, I think one boat would be the right number. Get out boat. Which maybe, boat would you keep? Well, it depends on the subject separation, right? So mm. this one boat right now is in front of the dark mountain, and so it's standing out more. But I might wait for the dark boat, because I think it's a little more attractive to be against the light part of the water. Okay. So it stands out a little more. 
But when you see a spot like this, you hang out if you can. Sometimes you're traveling with family. Oops. They don't want to put up with your bullshit, but <laughs> why not? No, wait, did Sean send a picture in or was that a different Sean? I don't know. That's a good picture. There's a lot of Sean's. Do we have any questions or comments, Frank, that, that are interesting to you? Yes, Chris Reddy chimed in <clears throat> about the boat name, and I agree with him on this one. It should be Chell Seaweed. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> I like that. And here's a question for you. Zed x gaming asks where do you see your photography going in the next three years are you exploring any different genres or trying any new techniques i my photography goes in waves so right now i'm doing a lot more organic type stuff where i used to go out and chase like more dramatic i've just been doing more simple compositions um and i've seen a lot of people as they age kind of lean towards that so i'm wondering if i'm going to stay towards that we are planning to do more travel, so I'll probably have landscapes that I'll be working on soon. How about you? Um, with the travel, I plan to plan out my shots on a bigger scale, like finding the parts of the earth that I'm most excited to photograph and actually like going out of my way to go there. I think I'm actually going to make you more and family more a part of the pictures because when I go back through my portfolio, even when I find my favorite shots, there's something really impersonal and sterile about nobody that I care about being in them, which yeah. I think works for mass appeal, but then you go back 15 years and you're like, I remember being at Machu Picchu, but Tony's not in the picture and that's what I actually <laughs> would like to remember. So um, I think I'll be just incorporating the things I more personally care about rather than thinking about posting to a feed to get likes, so. That's a good point. And my other thing is a wildlife video. Oh yeah, well, it's largely inspired by our guest next week, Mark Smith, but I've been yeah. working on it for about a year now and I've been a wildlife photographer for like 30 years or something. And it's hard, but wildlife video is like a whole other level of challenge. And Mark Smith is and amazing. It's reinvigorated me to be trying yeah. to do that. Okay, let's go back to this picture of Sean Hu. Sean Hu. I like, see, I really like the contrast of all of the texture in these trees and the light with just like the muted fog. I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. You could definitely get that shutter speed down and that would help smooth out the water some. Definitely be shooting at the base ISO, maybe even like F22. Like see how long you can handle that and it'll, it'll just improve the mood a little bit. Okay, from Alexander here. Um, oh my gosh. We're only 32 pictures in. Don't we have like 200 pictures? Oh, yeah. You're saying we should move a little quicker because yeah. it's time to reimport. We Sorry, we get so into it. We like to look at all of your pictures. Um, a good, I mean, these trees could not have that subject separation without the fog, so that was great. Um, yeah. And I like that you got the color in there. I might just brighten it up a little bit, and that looks good. Oh, my God. Oh, Barbara, Barbara, this shot is absolutely gorgeous. Wow, look how you've got this framing with these mm -hmm. bushes. You have a little subject here. The waterfall, the fog, pick. Oh my gosh. See, whenever we say we want to move faster, there's just amazing pictures. You have some natural framing here. Um, I think that you could actually, sorry, Jim, uh, just crop out the left side, and that's kind of like the view. Yeah, I agree. Oh, taken with the Samsung Galaxy. Let's see here. I don't know where the horizon is, but. That that one purple flower or whatever in the lower right corner for some reason my eye just keeps going there so i would either make that more or less prominent like either frame it out or make it a focal point do you think the black and white's kind of cool it's kind of creepy like the boats will just float away yeah and i think i'd rather feel like it went on for infinity so we're gonna kill jim <laughs> but i'm just gonna crop on the left a little bit but there. he's he's so good to us <laughs> he brought this on himself he knows that you're called tony northcrop Okay. Uh, oh man, that shot is really good. I like the yellow this one there. This is so beautiful. That's... The bus there makes it really interesting. You know, some color grading could really. I moved oh. way on. You were looking at your keyboard. I know we got to hurry through these pictures. But I saw an animal. Oh. The sheep. <laughs> it's so cute. Picking five stars. I love the animal. The little expression. It's this a real tree. hack for the show. It's just a. You could you could crop in. No. Right. Oh, don't touch sheepy. Okay, pick. Ooh, this is interesting. I I feel like it may be too high contrast, right? We'll try going even more extreme with it. I let me see. 
No. I will. I want to raise the black point further, but I can't. Really? Yeah, I'm at a hundred. I like it lower. Ooh. Okay. Great spot, Daniel. Dominica. Um, this is a great, interesting location. Great fog that we have here, or haze, or whatever. But the composition of the TPs is a little uncomfortable to me because we have one on the left that's sort of cropped in the edge of the frame, and one on the right that's sort of cropped. I guess I would try to think more about the foreground subjects and their separation from the edges of the frame. I, I like the scene and I do love all this texture and layers that you have. I just warmed it up even more just to add to the mood that you had going. And I think that adds a little more atmosphere. Oh. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. I love I the eagle or vulture or whatever in the background up there. This is great. I, I, I love this, hey. yeah. And I like that you went cool with the photo. It looks cold, which I can tell it is, but I just feel this picture. I feel like I'm in it, especially because you're wide angle and up in this little goat's face. The tree. This is gorgeous. Mm, this is gorgeous. Yeah, that's all it really takes is a single tree like this, and this is done with a smartphone. I like it. I like it even better in black and white. You're right. Great shot, Chris. You get a pick. Okay, do we need to like skim through Whoa. here a little bit? Whoa, minimalistic. Very cool. Pick. Yeah, great job. Whoa, that's cool. I would go, I think I might black and white this one just because it's all about symmetry. Mm -hmm. oh, you all go to interesting places. Now I'm doing, sometimes I get quiet because I forget I'm supposed to be doing this <laughs> okay let's go to the grid so we can pick and choose some because okay. we've got to get through a little bit um what's going on over there frank there's some there's some people that agree to take uh, more photos of the ones that you love uh, which i always think is a great thing and somebody had asked about sending in raw photos you don't send in raw photos you send in jpegs to this show yeah. uh, so i have thought about Doing raw photos. I have thought about doing raw photos before, maybe because you can embed your edits in the raw photo, and that might give us some extra latitude. Like maybe we need to have a special oh. show. Uh, yeah, well, we would probably experiment with it. Yeah, maybe pick a few raw photos and go deeper in the edits to demonstrate. Yeah, but otherwise, or maybe that's the interesting part is seeing how we would edit a photo. Yeah. What else do you have over there, Frank? We're about caught up right now, okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll keep going through the photos. Is Jim okay? Yeah, it takes like 15 minutes for it to get into his bloodstream okay. anyway. We'll so. check in with Jim in another 10. Look at this gorgeous picture. Yeah, this picture is fantastic. You get to pick Darshan. Wait, I, love, I like to edit the pictures I love the most. <laughs> you can raise the white point a little? Yeah. I want it to be a little brighter, yeah. Wow. It's so beautiful. Pick. Oh, look at that. Yeah, those are some crazy god rays. Yeah, like beautiful. Every single branch is cutting some Slicing shadow into it. Thing. Yeah. Really pretty. I like the haze on the water. Um, it's nice. Launch for hire. This one's very interesting, too. Let's bring up the whites a little. I don't know. These are, oh. Oh. I'm sure that the fog was very helpful here in creating a cool background for the games. Okay. I like the color, too. You have this um, kind of dramatic, foggy, spooky background, and then he's just bright and having a great time. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of neat. Burning clouds and morning mountain fog. Yeah, I love the warmth of this photo. And the fog really creates some interesting texture for it. Which, uh, oh, wow. I love the light streaming through here. Oh, let me play. I think I might just go. It's already warm and it's yeah, making it pretty. That's a good edit. I might just lean into it. I I am happy for you that you got to be here. This must have just been one of those moments where you're feasting your eyes. Pick. It's beautiful. Um, Mike, this is so cool that you isolated the little island. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could make it kind of creepy or weird. or We could definitely crop. Oh, sorry, Jim. Jim is not okay. That's cool. Ooh, this is a good one. 
I might bring a little bit of warmth back to the yellow line just to accentuate, not a lot. Um, but yeah, I like the way you composed it and you cropped pretty heavily. I'm gonna give a pick. What do you think, Tony? You're being so quiet. Did the margarita hit? No, I would just, I, I feel like well, I want to actually like brighten it up, but also reduce the contrast some. That was cool. I like what you did. Let's see what else we got here, and we can do a re-import. Oh, what's catching your eye? Wow. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what is, is this a multiple exposure, or? Okay. okay, I mean, you may just think about it. I'll give you a pick for that. I don't know what is going on. I like that one a lot, and also I'm very confused. Just generally. Okay, what's this? It's the boat you wanted, Tony. Is that? Yeah, he got it. Oh, it's Jim. Oh. Great shot. Halifax? Oh, look at this one. Yeah, that's spooky. They got the birds flying through. See, that's that extra thing that you need. You gotta wait for the birds. That is beautiful. Great shot, Roberto. Okay, let's give some helpful tips. This is, an example of when fog works well. Fog and the forest yeah. are a good combination. You're able to isolate the trees for the first time. That one gets a pick. The framing of the two trees on either side. Great yeah. shot. Let's see. Look at this one. Really beautiful. Yeah, but I think we could have like moved to the down and to the left a little bit and separated the two maybe. sort of subjects. Balance them. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Sometimes you're Whoa. just doing the best you can. I give this a pick. I like those are a great fog plan. I like that you went cool and you added to the mood with the coloring of the photo. Um, and I like that you added something in the foreground. It's darker. It's adding depth. Very interesting. Whoa, this isn't fog. I, but you knew that was cool, didn't you? Look at this one. Oh, what a gorgeous spot. I've never seen fog great escape spot. like that. Have no, you? it's such a, like a heavy fog. Pick. Uh, pick, but for the fog. This one? The person, right? It's the person that really makes the shot. I know him. <laughs> foggy horses. Oh my gosh, a foggy drummer? I never knew. I wanted to bring this up. If you like that look, like Game of Thrones old castle look where the air is just thick, you can get atmosphere in a can. And we use it all the time for photo shoots. You just spray it in the air. And it, it settles after a minute or two, but it picks up the light like that. I, my only struggle is that it's like so beautiful and delicate and i feel like he's playing metal or something he's like the <laughs> angel of metal You're I don't... Right. the mood's not really balanced right but that also makes it interesting yeah last week we had so many like ballerinas balancing against things that would have been a good spot for a ballerina whoa this doesn't look real Okay, but I like it. Pick. Wow. Oh, what a you know, road. you all are inspiring me to, to go into the forest on a foggy day. You're right. Maybe that should be our next fog plan. I actually thought this might be Louis Jan's photo. Are these birds real? No birds are real, Chels. <laughs> Visit is, birdsaren'treal.com for more information. This is gorgeous. Look at that. I give you a pick. I just want to know if those birds are real. Tell me. Tell me, Jesus. Oh, Wendy Cooper, simple but beautiful. The fog, the fog is isolating these grasses. Oh, glad Wendy Cooper is still with us. Wow. What an amazing spot. What is this? It must be gorgeous. loud at that hotel. What a gorgeous spot. Maybe that's David's house. <laughs> I have so many sure photos with the same file name, like edit, 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 <laughs> because you edit it, you're done, and then later you go back and open it in Photoshop again and again. No, mine say final, final in oh, all caps. I have files that are like final seven. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, this is really cool. I love how they just go out into the distance. Sarah, I, I want to brighten it a little this bit. This is so creative, and I... I I love how you played with the color, with the blue and the red, and this is gorgeous. I like this a lot. I'm gonna give you a pick. I, I've never seen a photo like that. Okay, we have gotten to almost all of the first, Ooh, Julian. Okay, I think Julian had a drone. 
That's smart. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like Ryan. that. I don't know what's going on. There. We saw a picture by Ryan already. Uh, I'm going to re-import. Is there any questions or do you just want to talk for a second? I don't, but I think he has questions. Yeah. Uh, you guys had asked me before, is Jim okay? I didn't realize you were asking me that, but he chimed in a little bit after and he said my liver with four or five exclamation points <laughs> after it. So I think he's in the zone right now. There's and, donors out there. <laughs> and uh, you, you had brought up a photo that you thought was Lewis Chan's and it's funny because Kyle had noticed that just scrolling through the thumbnails, he said he spotted Lewis Chan's or noticed Lewis Chan's <laughs> photo right away. So yeah. nice job on Lewis for having uh, a repetitive kind of style. Yeah, he did develop a style. And there was somebody who said, you guys should do more lives like this. And I'm not sure if that person knows or not, but Tony and Chelsea are live every Thursday now starting at five o'clock. Yeah, once a week. So put it in your calendar and then send a calendar invite to everybody <laughs> please it needs some help <laughs> help okay fog lifting over the bank house that's very thomas kincaidian yeah i think i might pull forward into the left a little bit and use these two posts to sort of frame the house a little bit but i do like that the trees come in right yeah, through there i do too You're at F i love the colors that's smart beautiful i was going to give it a pick because okay. the mood is immaculate Oh, this is such a deep panorama that it's like there's in this format, there's almost nothing like it's very small. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. this works best in like a massive print that fills a room or something. But it's kind of difficult to consume a picture like this on the Internet. I also think that these corners might be getting a little yeah. dark, but mm. that's cool. Oh. Yeah, this is really cool the way it just sort of pops out there. This yeah. might be, like you probably didn't have a tripod on you, but it would be a great time to do like a 10 second exposure with the headlights and taillights of the cars going through there. Oh yeah, that that's very interesting though. I like seeing it. I mean, I'm never prepared when the moment does strike. I don't, yeah. This feels a little bit imbalanced to me, right? Don't you want to sort of key in on the main focal points well, here let's see. Let's simplify the image a little let's bit. Let's just experiment. I kind of liked a little more negative space. Just so. False. <laughs> Incorrect. Okay. Great shot, Eric. I'm giving you a pick. Whoa, Bev, you kept it simple, but it does look cool. I feel like this is from fire. Yeah, the colors. Oh, Ooh. I like this a lot. But, like, there's a weird glow to it, right? What? Some, some of the happened with the edits. Look around the trunk, it's all. It could, let's see. Um, see, they um, oh, yeah. did masking. Oh yeah, a problem with the masking. Sorry yeah. to call it your masking. Honestly, a lot of times my masking is I mean, pretty crazy. Yeah, most people probably wouldn't notice. It's just my eye, oh, well, right away, just by brightening the background, I think that made it look better. So be careful with those selections. I don't know how you're doing the edits, but it didn't end up looking that natural. But I think the shot itself is really cool and eye-catching. Oh, downtown Rochester. That's where we got our dog, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I really like Rochester. I've only been yeah. there the one time. We should like, go back so we can go to the... Um, Kodak Museum? The Eastman, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I like how the skyline disappears. I do wish there were like a couple of ducks going through the foreground. There. Yeah, there's a lot of negative space, but I don't know how to deal with that. Ducks. Nathan Lemon. I like your colors. You have this warm sun on the trees and it's contrasting with the blues in the background. So that's really working. Um, it might just brighten it a little bit, but I like that. Yeah, I wish we could have gotten closer to those trees. Like I think I feel like there's too much negative space here. I think there's too much negative space here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's Kyle. It's I was Kyle. like, right away, I was like, this picture is fantastic. And then I look at the name. I mean, he's got a subject perfectly silhouetted there. I, yeah. I wish there were a little more space underneath her. She feels a little too close to the Did edge you want to do Cotty here? Oh, that would be great. You're absolutely right. Or like, <laughs> like a vintage Aston Martin. Well, actually, his dad likes cars, so he could probably help him uh, ride his bike. Dad, ride your bike. Yeah, bring out that 911. But I love the colors. I like that the Golden Gate Bridge is just peeking out of the fog, and then, of course, putting a person there right in front of the fog was a great choice. So I like that a lot. Pick for you. 
Marty D. Marty, I think your, your picture's out of focus. Now that, I swear that happens every time I try to shoot fog. Like the camera's just like, hey, I can't find sharpness here. I'm going in and out, I'm hunting. Sometimes you gotta switch into manual and just do it yourself. But I like where you're going with this, these trees in a row, that's pretty cool. I might get the flag out, not to seem unpatriotic or anything. Beth Thomas, Thompson, oh. Oh man, it's so much better warmer. I really like that. And then again, I feel like it needs one more thing, like it needs a kayaker coming through. Oh, I like this with no kayaker. Kayakers are destructive. Pick. Whoa. What the hell is going on? He waited for, <laughs> he waited. Just you, like, you can't really count on that. Is that for real? What is going on with this helicopter? What are they, they doing? That is, that seems like a bad idea. These are, where are these glaciers, Rob Allen? This is very cool. What could we do to bring up this helicopter a little bit more? I might, oh, you can do objects. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. And then you got to paint over the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And I think it got it. Now you just make your adjustments. Oh, it did okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Um, well, that's incredible. I wish we could see a little bit of motion in the props. But wait. I, I'm surprised one one thousandth was enough to freeze it. I think that worked pretty well. We got a little more pop out of it. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. I, we like it, obviously. We're just sitting here talking about you, Rob. This is very classically beautiful, Jeff. Yeah, I love simple, almost abstract compositions like that. I do like it a little bit warmer. I like it a touch sepia. I might even just actually be less. Just oh. Just a little bit less. Oh, we're going very simplistic today. Okay. Here's Peter. I saw the on Zillow for $3,500 a month. <laughs> One bedroom, mm. lots of property. <laughs> Times are tough. Gen Z has got to stop complaining and just suck yeah, it up. Yeah, stop, stop eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, it's cool. Yeah. You found something interesting and you managed to isolate it with the fog. And Though you managed to make a shape out of it. I didn't see that shape. I, I wish it would have been a little more on the nose. Like a oh, you obvious. didn't know that this was a home? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. This is great. I, I want to come in a little bit. I want to leave a little bit of the water here. And maybe I'll go a little off-center with them. Wow. This look feels like it would be front page of a new like a local newspaper yeah right you're right it's a good shot yeah that's a okay. great shot me let's mood it out mood it out mm. do, 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 do. don't be afraid to add a little something yeah okay? i feel like that could be a picture on the hotel of a ski lodge mm. right Is this level? It doesn't, it doesn't feel level to me. It could be Am level. crazy? It's tough because there's not a hard horizon there, but somehow it just feels a little bit off. Um, he does have a bird coming through. Yeah. Which is valuable because that's actually where my eye rested. This bird looks real too. Yeah. Let's give it a pick. No offense to other bird person. Was your bird real? Ooh, you've got a per. You like when there's a person, don't you? I do, but you I like want people. to lower the camera a little bit. You like birds. You See, like Ducatis. if you Ducatis. lower the camera, <laughs> then the subject here would be more against the white sky and would add just a little more pop. Pick. I like it a lot. But it's a great shot. <gasps> okay, I guess there's That's a little cool. fog in there. Yeah, you made a whole cinematic scene. Very cool. I'll give that a pick. And I like that he's using the Canon EOS Rebel. So if you had said add a person... He found a creative way to do that where you don't need oh, to inconvenience there anybody. There you go. That's a point. Wow. I like uh, the long shutter yeah, speed, Andrew. Yeah, the one thirteenth there really worked out. See, Fantastic. I think that this works because you managed to add a subject without them being so still that they're distracting. So I get the feeling of runners going through without being distracted by what they look like or what they're wearing. Oh, I thought this was like a Me too. bit in the picture, but it's just for some reason there's a big empty spot in the... Camera name. I'm gonna do a little more contrast. Cool. I gave you a pick. Yeah, great that shot. was a fun idea. Oh, the nerdster! You made your own fog. 
that totally counts. People should definitely be using like fog machines more. That's cool. Yeah. I don't want to give that. up your secrets. Oh, where we could go cool. I feel like if the blinds are going to be in the picture, then you need to set up a strobe outside the blinds, like shooting light through the blinds, right? Yeah. Because right now it's, it feels non-deliberate. This is neat. I give you a pick. I feel like the mood I get is that he manifested from a digital existence. Mm -hmm. like, like he is just born. Like he was just born from a computer itself. Yeah. Someone AI'd him into real life. Soon. Fabio. This picture has so much texture to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty gorgeous. Pick. And I love the path there. Yeah, this leading line, you have reflections. Some, yeah, that's great. Some negative space for me to think about. Get that shutter speed down, though. You don't need to be at one five thousandths. Ooh. Pretty. Frank, do you have any more questions or comments for us? Yeah, uh, somebody had a request for a long exposure show someday, which could be a good idea. That's a good idea. I like the good ideas. Uh, Jesse, who took the photo of the Yosemite Park, he said that those birds were real. Uh, Kathy W. said, cancel your dinner plans. I believe, a.k.a. that means she wants you to go longer on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, ZX Gaming had asked another good question and said, how many days a week do you guys work on your YouTube videos? And I had, I had one question for Kyle for that. That shot was amazing on, of the Golden Gate Bridge there. How often does that kind of weather creep in there, Kyle? Is that something that's like a seasonal thing or is that like a once a, a year type shot? I was just curious. So yeah, how many days a week do you guys work on your YouTube videos was a, a question. Um, I don't know. Like some days none and some days a lot. <laughs> Sometimes we... I didn't do... Well, I, we recorded this video, but today I just worked on books. Last two days I've just worked on books. But today I was editing a podcast. So it depends because sometimes I'm working on something not video related and Tony is or he is and I'm not. Yeah. But probably almost every day. Most days. But towards our deadline. we take the weekends off most weekends. Yeah. Some weekends we have to work. Also our Monday deadlines are all monthly so we have to just have all of our sponsored videos by the end of the month. So you will notice <laughs> our videos push towards the end of the month. So sometimes we take some days off at the beginning of the month. And then we're like, ah! <laughs> Why did we do that? Yeah, we're exhausted because we worked so hard at the end of last month and we put everything off and then we had to race again. Um, Frank, I know that Kyle and his group of photographers that he, I don't know if he still shoots with them, but he used to, they would track the weather very closely um, and so they would know the atmospheric conditions so that they could get those foggy shots and stuff. They worked on that. There was yeah, a lot a of work they put that into that. Yeah. Okay, Stu Whitaker. Stu Whitaker. I made some adjustments to it, and then I arrived at almost the exact same picture. <laughs> so wow. I guess you did. You good. did it, Stu. Great job. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, this is like great street photography. Yeah, I, I love the, the fact that you can see the line of the shadow coming down mm -hmm. from the wall. Yeah, I'm just gonna give it a pick. Like, I don't know, that's sir. Hypnotic to me. I really like that shot. I feel like he needs it better. Does he have a mask, sir? Your lungs are going to be... Oh, yeah. He should not be breathing that on in. You're right. That is bad. I'm telling your mom. Okay. I give that a pick as well. Bob Carlyle, beautiful colors contrasting with the coolness of the foreground. I like that. I think we could pop the whites a little. That's like... The show should be called Pop the Whites. <laughs> That's a bad name. I take no. that back. Yeah, it should definitely no, not be, be called, called that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Uh, so I gotta reset a little bit after that. This is a, a gorgeous scene. I love the low rolling fog. This is like the best type of fog to get a little bit elevated. Like for me, I'm gonna pop a drone in the air when I see this type of fog because you're on the ground, there's nothing. You can't see anything. It's just a, you're in a cloud. So great job getting to a higher altitude. Pop there. a drone? Better than pop the lights. <laughs> this is why I don't name things. It's always a little bit scary. This one's interesting. I like that the very dark trees add some depth. You want a Ducati, but you can't I would be hunting for a focal point because yeah. my eye didn't rest anywhere. Yeah. 
Hey Dwayne photos. I like the light. There's a little bit of fog. I still think that the background's distracting. I, my eye went right to this car. Yeah. Um, but I still think it's cool. I think it's a good fog plan. Bridges are a great fog plan. Yeah, maybe more fog. Oh, black and white helped with that. Okay. There's I smoke. want to get closer. Actually, I wish these bushy trees would go away and we could just see these trees. Okay, well, that's what um, chainsaws are for. <laughs> yeah, bring a chainsaw, part of your fog plan. Well, this is interesting because the fog is way in the distance. That's kind of cool. There's a lot of, there is this leading line here, but there's a lot of texture. Yeah, I almost can't, like my eye doesn't rest anywhere in the bottom. And I think the more interesting part is the top, you know, one fifth of the frame. We could crop a little out. Yeah, I think that might work better or, you know, if Leslie had tilted the camera back a little bit. I don't know why I don't know about cropping all of a sudden. Or maybe even a more telephoto lens would have helped. Yeah, right away I think that's better, yeah. That's cool. I don't know. I don't know how those rocks were formed, volcanic rock. Woo! That's very interesting. Yeah, I love your color shot. tone. The tones are really beautiful. I would add just a little more contrast. Let's see. That is so pretty. Yeah. Uh, you get a thick man, so that's a gorgeous shot. Wow. These people live in beautiful places. Um, I feel like I want to back off the editing a little bit. Don't yeah. We, we don't have that slider, but I want it to be a little less, don't you think? Um, yeah, and this can happen. Like, if you feel like the lighting is flat and you try to do it with kind of an HDR-y look, then things can end up looking having too much dynamic range mm -hmm. and so yeah i agree i think i would just back off a little bit if i lower the contrast you can see a little bit you could soften it up because it looks like it should be a soft romantic picture so i would try that but yeah. it's beautiful the composition's beautiful and of course the background is gorgeous this is really whoa cute. dang you can really see those feathers very cool yeah I think that's great. You caught an interesting moment from the bird. Like its pose could have been a little bit better, but you got it with its bill open and singing a song. I think I'd just um, crop out a little more post. But yeah. Oh, Tony, your favorite I know, person in the forest. I know, found a subject and put it in there. Also, you really needed a person here to show scale. Mm -hmm. And that can happen in your, when you're in a place where there's huge trees or something else that's very large. If you don't have something for scale, then that can get lost in a picture. Um, we were just in Puerto Rico taking landscape pictures and there were these beautiful, huge canyons, but when I didn't have Tony in the picture, that kind of got lost. So it's good to have something for scale. Yeah, I struggled with that too. Here's another concert photo. Such good lighting and fog and concerts. Uh, rock. Um, I think this is great. I might. Like, they deliberately lowered the white point, but I kind of think it should be bright because it was bright, but I don't want to lose all the contrast from the fog. So yeah, That's so cool. Yeah, great shot. Oh, oh, man, what a gorgeous spot. I would just crop out the car. I was going to say, it's that white car. You might even have, if you lowered down a little bit, maybe you could have put the car behind the fence post. Like, it's okay to hide stuff behind foreground elements, but your crop works really well there. Whoa. Okay, is this must be a wildfire situation? Yeah, that seems like a small bucket to try to be putting out fires, though. Also, well, we got a, like a, I don't got really a piece know. of uh, sensor dust going on there. Story of my life. Cool. That didn't do it. I love the leading line of this one, Amanda. And you have color contrast. If the greens of the trees and this, you made, I can mm -hmm. see that you made the dirt more orangey to add that contrast. You added mood, which is really good. And then you use the road as a leading line down through the scene. So it's a beautiful composition. And I love the mood you added with your edits and your color. Yeah, uh, great shot. I would get the ISO down to 100, use the longer shutter speed. And if you had a mountain biker or even yourself, put the camera in a tripod and walk through the frame. Here we have, looks like a female moose. Yeah, they are peeing. Oh, good eye. <laughs> Thank you. Chelsea, you're Thanks. right, now I can't unsee that or focus on anything else but that, so. <laughs> well, that's nature, Tony. You need to grow up. <laughs> um, 
Well, you definitely caught a unique moment. Sometimes that happens to me with birds. I do think that the fog works here. And I do think it would be okay to add oh, yeah. some mood. So now it's a morning pee. And that's relatable. <laughs> Pick. Same here. We could add, you could make it warmer and it looks like the morning. You could make it night and it looks like a cool winter day. But don't be afraid to use color to tell a story. Yeah, especially I'm gonna when make the photo's it... like monochromatic like this to begin with. Pick your color. Great job. Oh, Aaron, this is beautiful. The, the, but this is too much. Uh, too much color? It's a little too much, yeah. Well, we could just... I like the spot, but right away I was just thinking about the colors. Like, I didn't even notice the horses. I was just like, what's wrong about this? And So maybe it went too far with the edits. So I just put down the vibrance a little bit. It is so easy to go a little too far. And when I edit, I do the editing that I want to do, and then I usually dial it down by about 25% because you acclimate as you edit, you edit, you edit. Yeah. You're acclimating. It's like adding too much salt to your cooking. So do your edits and then dial them back, and you can often do that here. You have this total slider that you can do. Um, and then if you're really patient, you can wait until the next day to post or a few hours later because then you'll be looking at it with fresh eyes. Um, but I'm not that patient, so... Do as I say, not as I do. This is a nice one, Matthew. I will not use this without permission. <laughs> I, I think it would be better if we were a little lower, which I realize might be impossible, but uh, I do think it's cute. Pretty moon. This one's pretty too. Oh, is that the same guy? Yeah, it is. Okay, we're yeah. too close to the end. We're, we're gonna look at every All right, let's look at the grid. We're almost done here. Oh. I like that the subject here is so close to the edge of the frame. It's like they're walking on the edge of the frame. Okay, yeah. what oh, catches well, the your eye? balloon one. Oh, this 51, one? 51, yeah. Whoa. Great, great. That's beautiful. Beautiful shot, Simon. Okay. Just a little bit of fog, more like a haze, but it counts. I like this one. The colors there are just great. I was going to take the colors out, but... <laughs> okay. All but right. I, like I like the colors, too. too. I like the colors better. Me, too. Everyone does that black and white, so I think you made the right choice. This one's very this cool. This haunting. Yeah, I like that you made a creepy composition. Uh, let's see, what else catches your eye? Look at this composition, that's cool. I think that you could play with the colors here and get some more mood going on, like, like if you did the shadows blue and the highlights yellow, that could look good. And you can do that by going into the color mixer. Ooh, to do, no. That's not right. Color grading. And you select the shadows, and then you can make the shadows cool. And then you select the highlights, and you can make the highlights warm. And this would be a great spot for a long exposure at night with headlights and taillights passing ah, through. Oops. Think about it. Uh oh, I've gone rogue. How do I get out of here? All right. Let's go back to the grid. Okay. What's catching your eye? Oh, this? Yeah, that's spectacular. This is unusual. Is this a I think concert a or do you think it's a posed photo? I think no, it's a concert. They're because... wired up for sound, so yeah, it must be a concert. Wow, what a great set. Concerts are so great. If you can get stage access, get up front of the pit, that's you get just a great angle. An amazing photo. And really you're benefiting from somebody else's work because they put so much effort into the lighting and the yeah. fog and the special effects and pyrotechnics and all that. Okay. Tony, it's 6.03. Yeah, I guess we got to get to dinner. Well, we got to ask some last questions. Do you okay. have anything else before we go? Jim says he's heading off to his AA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Pascal had said about that bird that was uh, speaking out there on the post. He said it was uh, speaking out at a town hall meeting. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, that's about all we, we have right now. We're all, we're all caught up. Oh, thank you, Frank. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Next week, Mark Smith will be helping us review your wildlife photos. So That's February the 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So join us then, and thanks so much. Bye. That is all. That is all.